polycystic kidney disease is the topic. I'll abbreviate it PKD in this video. And um, PKD is a familial disease. It's actually uh, most commonly autosomal dominant and therefore most clinical vignettes that you see on the licensing exams will have some sort of family history uh, included in the patient presentation. Essentially what happens in PKD is that you have these genetic mutations and they lead to a lot of formation of cysts in the kidney and these cysts will be filled with fluids and as a result the kidney enlarges, gets bigger, and this can be detected. Now, one thing that is very common that they like to test on the licensing exams about PKD are actually what is happening outside the kidney, the extra renal manifestations of polycystic kidney disease. And there's one in particular that in addition to problems with the kidney, the patient may also have aneurysms in the cerebral arteries in particular the ones that are part of the circle of Willis and these sometimes are known as berry aneurysms that's the term given because they sort of resemble a berry kind of look like that and these may rupture and if they do it can lead to rather significant uh, consequence of subarachnoid hemorrhage so this is uh, commonly tested as a complication of polycystic kidney disease. So what are the, some of the symptoms of polycystic kidney disease that a patient will present with? I'll present the three most important that you'll see in an in opening uh, stem. The first is a flank pain, essentially the area of the kidney, or it might even be described as back pain. The next is hematuria, blood in the urine, and then long-term hypertension, high blood pressure. Also, it's not really a symptom, but it is part of the clinical vignette. There'll be some sort of family history. They'll talk about the siblings or the parents also having high blood pressure. Diagnosis. Well, without a doubt, the best initial test is a kidney ultrasound. Um, other tests are possible, but they're quite expensive. So this is the best initial choice. And what it will show is bilaterally multiple cysts in the kidney and as a result the um, you will have renal enlargement due to these fluid filled cysts. Other tests that you can do definitely a urine analysis because there sometimes is a risk of infection. Kidney tests such as BUN and creatinine because PKD can eventually lead to renal failure slowly slow progressive renal failure because of the cysts interfering with the normal parenchyma, the normal tissue. And if you suspect that this patient might have that dreaded complication of cerebral aneurysm, then definitely some sort of head imaging, such as a head CT or a MRA, magnetic resonance angiography, would be appropriate to do. In terms of treatment, really, PKD, the most important thing is control of the complications. So the complications, of course, the biggest one is high blood pressure. So that is really uh, key because that will help uh, preserve the kidney function. And the most common medications used to control the blood pressure in a setting of PKD is ACE inhibitors. And if the patient does uh, progress to renal failure, which definitely can happen, then unfortunately the patient has to go on hemodialysis. Well, let's take a look at some vignettes now. 55-year-old white man enters your practice with complaint of flank pains that have occurred on either side from time to time. He says that he was treated in another city for hypertension over several years. He says that he has positive tests for blood in the urine in the past, but that no cause has ever been found. BUN level is 40, normal is 20, creatinine is 1.8, CBC is normal, Examination of the abdomen reveals a deep mass in each flank. Which of the following is most likely accounts for the clinical picture presented? All right, well, let's go through these. Carcinoma of the bladder, renal cell carcinoma. These actually usually are not bilateral. 
So this this patient is presenting with flank uh, masses uh, bilaterally. So that really points toward polycystic. Colorectal cancer will present a little differently, usually bloody blood in the stool. So with the with the limited information we have, the best choice, most likely choice, is polycystic kidneys. Next question. A 39-year-old man comes to the office because of achy low back pain for several weeks. He states that it's a dull pain that comes on gradually, no other symptoms. They have been treating him for hypertension with hydrochlorothiazide and enalapril for years. His father and younger sister also have hypertension. Temperature is 98, blood pressure is 135, pulse is 65. Physical exam shows left-sided flank tenderness. Cardiac exam reveals a mid-systolic click. Urine dipstick test shows microscopic hematuria. Most appropriate next step is. Well, he's probably got something going on with his kidney. He's definitely got the flank pain, or as in this case described as back pain. He's got a history of hypertension, and he's got family history. They're talking about his father and younger sister. So let's just say that it might be polycystic kidney. What would you do? Renal biopsy? No, that's a little too invasive for the next step. CT of the kidneys, that's a good choice, but it's a little expensive. IVP, not uh, to diagnose PKD. Renal ultrasound, definitely. And reassure him and treat him with naproxen, probably not the best choice just to send him home. So the answer for this is D, do a ultrasound of the kidney. And then finally, 42-year-old woman is noted to have mildly elevated creatinine and BUN on routine physical exam. She recalls that her father also had kidney trouble and died in kidney failure. Workup reveals persistent azotemia and microscopic hematuria without evidence of urinary tract infection. Ultrasound of the kidneys identifies bilaterally enlarged and multicystic kidneys. In addition to chronic renal failure, the clinician should also be concerned about her risk of. So they basically told you that she's got this autosomal dominant well, we don't really even know if it's autosomal dominant, but it's definitely familial polycystic kidney disease. And they're basically saying, what are some of the possible complications? Well, remember, in addition to kidney problems, some people can develop these cerebral aneurysms. And if they rupture, they can cause subarachnoid hemorrhage. So the answer to this question is E.